Yandex, and I'm going to tell you how we included security people in our M and A procedure. I found this picture that is usually used to illustrate M and A. Well, technically, this is what it probably looks like because we are a tech giant and we buy smaller companies. Although philosophically, it should be portrayed differently because each and every company that we as Yandex acquire is the missing part of the puzzle that makes us much stronger. And I should explain from the outside, I don't feel comfortable telling you about all that. Because I realize that it's probably not the best time now to shop for companies. Well, if I announced a different topic, uh, such as optimizing security departments and corporations, there would be more people listening to me. But this is something I wanted to talk about for quite some time, and I think that we've been able to design a very reliable M and A process and the security element of it. And I'm telling you about it because we have significant experience in this respect. Last year, we closed 12 deals, and that's a lot for Yandex. And we have five deals in 2013. Please know that many of our acquisitions were pretty large and we uh, brought their infrastructure into our, our offices and uh, there were lots and lots of problems that we experienced and lots of new things we learned. Let me explain what we are not going to discuss. Since we are mostly buying startups, we will care about compliance first and foremost. Say, if we're buying a company and we want to make sure that it's compliant with the external requirements such as PCI, DSS, let me put it differently. We usually don't have to invest in making sure that the startup we acquire meets the PCAI DSS requirements. We don't buy office infrastructure, we rare, very rarely buy buildings. We just physically relocate people to our own offices and get offices all over the country. We give them our equipment, they use our infrastructure, our network, so we don't have to marry infrastructures. It simply doesn't happen that we would get a building with their own systems, you know, their own telephony, their own IT platforms. This is something we're not going to discuss, and you know, in my internal rehearsals, my colleagues told me nobody would be listening to you after you say that. He's still sitting, so I'm more comfortable. Companies we acquire are usually small by uh, large business standards. However, we integrate them considerably in our infrastructure, which means that they will have an impact on our overall security. Just like any other company, I believe, we were very uh, naive and blind at the beginning. Say five years ago, we didn't really have a process for m and We just bought companies we liked and we tried to integrate them. Well, we had to involve the legal department, uh, the tax accountants and uh, HR, but that was it. After that, we started developing a proper business process. We hired an M&A manager who would be on top of all deals like that. And he or she is formally in charge of all M&A transactions. I think it was late 2013 that we realized we we're seeing a flood of these deals and we were not really informed about them properly so we could not get involved to the optimal extent. So we suggested that we redesign the whole process. 
I should explain what kind of things we usually buy. We either require technologists, know-how, clientele, could be even suppliers if we're buying, say, a logistics company. So it could be connections or technologists of a company that we believe could make Yandex stronger. Secondly, we are buying software code. Sometimes we like somebody else's code, so we don't want to design our own from scratch. We simply want to integrate something good that somebody else did. After .ru is something that fits in this category. We like their code, although we update it a little bit. Sometimes we buy teams. It happens sometimes that uh, we don't like their code, but we love the team. For example, we acquired a team for mobile development, now they are working for us. In rare cases we acquire brands, as such, we never buy brands without everything else, but when we buy, say, after Dota U, we appreciate that, you know, they have a brand that is well known, and we don't want to lose the clientele that is loyal to this particular brand. Same goes for Kinopoisk. Since we mostly buy startups, it's pretty clear that their security standards will be pretty lax. What we see in most cases that people go for the cheapest, most functional tech. They don't care about security, they have too many things on their hands. They want all the functions straight away. They don't care about security, so they have a vulnerable code. And we usually want their code, so this is a problem for us. Well, Yandex is a very good employer, both internally and externally. However, members of small company startups uh, do not necessarily want to become part of a giant company like Yandex. Well, we hate bureaucracy just like you guys do, but we need bureaucracy being a large corporation. So there are some things startups won't well like. Well, if previously you would get resources you needed just by talking to the person at the next table, we'll have bad news for you because essentially you will need to go through a lengthy approval process. People often don't appreciate it. So what happens sometimes that teams are under-motivated. It is a serious issue for us, because we want our systems to be well protected, but we also want our teams to be happy, because that sort of guarantees that we won't have any new vulnerabilities. Well, if the security department is not involved, well, the, the security department will be notified eventually, but it usually happens like this. Oh, you know, we have a new service. It, it should be available from our data center starting tomorrow. Uh, sorry, we forgot to tell you about that. Well, it could be even worse. For example, we're already broadcasting, we're already delivering the service, and then it turns out it's buggy, people are complaining, only then we're notified. Obviously, we're not happy about that, because we acquire lots and lots of teams and products, and they will have an impact on our services and infrastructure, so we came up with a pretty simple response. Now, what can affect a small product we acquire? By Yandex standards, we are buying small things. But we believe in full integration. You know, all our services talk to each other and exchange data. And this means that we need highly reliable integration which means that a particular service we are adding to our portfolio can undermine 
the security. Oh, Jesus, we have people standing. This is a candy to my eye. Obviously, if you have a highly vulnerable service, you can use it as a vector of attack at our network, for example. Now, if, he, if a, a vulnerable service also processes payments or private data and then this information gets public, this will tarnish the reputation of Yandex. So we said information security people uh, must be involved in all m and deals. Sounds simple, right? We had several ideas for that. We could not do everything ideally from scratch. So I'll give you the full story. I'll tell you about the stages we went through. In fact, since we have a single M&A manager, it's easy for us, because we only had to get approval of this one person. Since he's in charge of all M&A transactions, by talking to him we can make sure we learn about them ahead of time as well. So we were lucky we did not have to actually negotiate with the whole company, since this part of uh, our operations is fully centralized. And then this uh, m and manager says, how are we going to do that? Well, the first idea we had, well, you know, a deal is a product, right? Is a essentially exchange. We are paying money for a particular product, and this product can be vulnerable. And we can say, for example, you know what? If we find some vulnerability, well, Yandex can demand a discount. Like we first perform an audit, we show that there are ex existing vulnerabilities and we calculate how much money will cost us to reduce trim, sorry, remove this vulnerability. And then we come to the M&A manager and tell him, you know what, it will take us three man months, or say 300,000 rubles. And they tell us, you know what, we have a five million dollar transaction, so you're one thousand, uh, I'm sorry, you're ten, uh, uh, what is it? Okay, yeah, 300,000 rules will not impact, and there are too many things we need to manage at the same time. We even came up with a formula which I hope you will not be able to read. We were very analytically retentive about it, really. We used it once, we are told thank you, but no thank you, and that was the end of the story. Oh, I see people are taking photos. It's fun, we're no longer using it. I'll give you the presentation, you shouldn't worry. Well, our next tack, next approach, was to package it as a risk assessment. I would say that uh, vulnerabilities are not just something that takes time to eradicate. They also change your risk exposure. Well, if, for example, your service processes personal data, this data can be leaked, it's not just a matter of fines, but it's also a matter of uh, repu potential reputation damage. So again, we develop fancy formulas, which I'm not showing here. So we eventually told business people, you know what, you can buy this application, and if it's really highly vulnerable, it will increase risk exposure for other services we have. Data can be stolen, and internal data can be stolen. We are talking about millions and millions of dollars at stake here. And the business response was, what's the chance this will happen? And we tell, you know, every school kid can do that. 
and they tell us, you know what, we are signing this deal, it is approved at the high level, your call is very important to us, thank you, goodbye. So we came up with a third idea. We decided to start from the very beginning. Obviously, the information security department doesn't really care much about discounts. What we care about is getting no new vulnerable code. We care about maintaining the same level of protection for the other services of Yandex. And want to make sure that the new team is able to play by the rules. So essentially we have objectives that are not financial at all. So this is how we came up with several processes which you see here. Now if we are buying a technology, and this does happen sometimes, we can buy a tech or a database, and sometimes we buy a technology and we run it off somebody else's assets. Let me put it differently. Sometimes, you know, we acquire something that we like, and for the kind of a grace period, a transition period, we're using the seller's machinery and the seller's code while we're redesigning the code. Eventually, we'll move everything into our data center. By this time, we'll, we will have redesigned the code. And the information security department certainly has no issue with acquisition of new technologies. All we say is that, you know, guys, we will appreciate if you tell us ahead of time that there's something you're going to do so that we can do a bit of thinking about the best technologies and the best architectures, as far as IS is concerned. If we're buying codes, well, this will be trickier, obviously. Say, if we buy code, relocate into our infrastructure, and we keep developing it, which is exactly what we did with after.re, that would be one case. Alternatively, we can actually buy code and uh, redesign it. So this is something that will affect our business processes, but we understand that eventually this code will be phased out. Getting a white box during an M&A deal is a near impossibility. In most cases, we're dealing with a black box or a gray box, which means that we never know how many critical vulnerabilities can be discovered. Well, our audit will show something but not everything. So we'll, we'll need to extrapolate this data. Well, for example, we will understand that if in a particular piece of code we've analyzed there are lots of vulnerabilities, we assume all the codes will be very buggy. Or alternatively, if we see that the underlying technology is pretty secure the way it is, we will be more relaxed. In any case, we will demand that all vulnerabilities are patched before the services are allowed into our infrastructure, which means we don't have an impact on the value of the deal, we can easily have an impact on the deadlines. So we essentially tell everybody that no, they need to factor this time in. Now, if we see that the underlying technology is very vulnerable, the new system will not go into the data center, it will only go into the DMZ, so that we can study it in detail. And then we can either link it to other services or we say, you know what, there is no way 
we can link this system to existing services. It's just too bad, it has to be redesigned. If we are acquiring a team, well, it's pretty easy because we include them in the awareness of raising routine, which I talked about in the previous PhD. We have, uh, by the way, a mandatory requirement that this induction, if you like, training, or orientation training has to be conducted offline. You have to attend it in person. So we talk about access controls, uh, logs, and what have you. And our attack is will tell all the new hires how different technologies must be used in a secure manner. We usually talk to them about the vulnerabilities that are often overlooked by developers or testers. So we also integrate teams. It can happen before the team has moved into our office or after this has happened. But in, in both cases, we include them in our life as quickly as we can. Then they relocate. Well, these relocations will differ depending on the kind of deal we struck. After Dota RU, for example, spent some time working in their old office and they were not properly integrated in our infrastructure at the beginning. I remember that we bought a team in St. Petersburg some time ago and for some time they worked via VPN. And we didn't need their service, we needed the people, so they would connect our system via VPN and would help us develop our services. The team we recently acquired moved straight over to our office, they are now working off our equipment, but it's a, it's a small team. After Dota RU is a large team, it's difficult to integrate somebody as big as them. We're looking at different ways of doing that because we are trying to make sure that we do not get those vulnerable technologies. I mentioned already that one vulnerability is to be patched straight away, but sometimes it's simply not possible. Which means we have an impact, we have a sign, but it's not like a power of veto. Now we can have a dedicated VLANs that enable us to put a particular system essentially in a DMZ for proper analysis. We have standardized most operations in the company, but this relocation is fully unique. I can't remember a single relocation that would go as planned. Obviously, things don't work as designed. Transactions are always fraught with issues. You know, there are these deals that are signed at the very top level, and we can't really have much of a say. Now, we will perform our own audits, we'll make our own recommendations. However, 99% of deals will now go according to this process. And people are used to that now. Everybody now knows that if Yandex is buying a company, they need to talk to the Information Security Department. And we are going to provide them with a list of criteria they need to check for. So it's a pretty well-known process for our managers. It is designed to be simple, and it's great that it is. Actually, we believe it's a fully functional process for several reasons. First, we don't look into the issues that the business seems to know better. We only mind our own business, which is information security. We don't teach business how to do business. Which makes our life so much easier. 
поле, то есть это не шаткое поле там, анализа рисков и не шаткое поле получения сделки, это довольно конкретное поле а, там, переезда в нашу инфраструктуру. И бизнес, в общем, как правило, идет на встречу. А, Во-вторых, мы постарались сделать so очень удобный To see our point. I personally believe that a cumbersome process never works unless you heavily invest in it. That's why we designed the process to be as convenient as possible. So it's convenient for the deal owner, for the M and A manager, and it's convenient for us as well. It's, by the way, a pretty automated process. So. A deal manager uh, will fill out what we call a, a blanket, a spreadsheet of whatever 1,000 fields. So they uh, they mention how we can test the product, whether it will be black box or white box testing. Then they generate a ticket that is sent to the information security department. So we test it this way we work, and then we produce our own decision, if you like. Well, first, we tell the techies on the seller side what we think about their service. And we tell our own techies. These are our technical recommendations, and we tell them how we can help them if they need our help. And for the managers, we say that, for example, this is a very bad service and you will have to wait so many months before we patch it up. This is what it looks like. Oh, it's obviously very long, you only see a portion of it. And then we will update it and we'll follow up if we realize that something is missing, we can easily go back to it and add more information. I think that now it takes three or four screens in total. But we still collect all the information we require. We now have a new M&A associate who came to me and asked to explain how the process works. I gave him the link and I told him if he needs any information, any other information, he always called me. He never called. And then he told me, no, there was too much information for me. What matters to us at this stage is that we learn about the transactions ahead of time, and that way we can come up with alternative routes that would enable us to better protect our assets and our services, while at the same time making sure that the transaction goes through. This will really matters to us. Now, this is our recent acquisition team called Any Void. Uh, this is a blank they put on their website when they were acquired. We were really, really happy that they became part of uh, our family, and we do not see smaller companies as small fish to eat up. We see them as a piece of the puzzle that makes us all stronger. Thank you very much. Time for a Q&A. And by the way, these are my contact details. If you have any questions, now is the time. Or should we have a mic, I think? Do we have a mic? We don't, but we need one. We usually buy web services. Would you like or would you like to give a particular example of vulnerability? Take a vast for example. In our hunt for errors, we sometimes find very unusual vulnerabilities. 
But you, you, you don't often find them during the first audit because usually web services are so fraught with errors and vulnerabilities. You know, you don't have to dig deep. You're not saying it's because they are bad, it's just because they're startups, they have other concerns. Yeah, skin wax access. You know the game. Do you have a <laughs> Can I ask you only about M and A? Now, the first few scenarios I told you about, we scrapped them. So we no longer calculate risk probabilities. When you assess vulnerabilities, you usually look at two things, that's criticality and simplicity. Now, our, our rule of thumb here is that if it's something simple that a school kid, a, you know, a script kitty can mount, now we assume it will happen. Now, if you have to go through several sequences of steps, we assume it's a complicated attack, therefore we assign it a lower probability. When you try explaining all this to business, they will say, can you show a single school kid who is actually going to attack us? And I don't think we'll ever be able to agree on that with business because we have different perspectives. You know, we can still get our way, although we do differently. We don't want the businesses to understand that they are seeing here a multi-million risk. I don't think we have really invented something very special here. No, I've spent my whole life analyzing risks, and uh, I'm still not happy by the way we do that. Got an old question, a uh, technical question. So you say, you talk to the M&A manager, and does it mean that people are actually allowed to walk the offices? You know what? I, as Department of Yags, has very good karma. Will other people be allowed to do that? You know what? Had we been walking around the office and telling everybody, all, all the systems must be closed, internet must be disconnected, no access to anybody on any, at any point in time, we have a very low karma. Well, we believe we are an ally to the business, and interestingly, the business believes as much. You know, it took us years to develop our good karma. So it's a great situation for us now. We can open any door. So we came to this M&A manager and we told him, let's develop a, an agreement, okay? Well, the first part of your presentation seemed to say that M&A is usually happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. What happens quite often is that a product that is about to be acquired has an architectural issue. And we sometimes say, you know, in order to make it a secure pro product, we need to change it completely from scratch. What will you say then to your managers if this is something you experience? Uh, 
No, there were some acquisitions which we had to redesign, and that turned out to be pretty expensive. But they didn't kill the deals, really, because we only buy things that we need. So we recently bought this software for taxi drivers. Now, we are not entirely happy about the way they were written, but this is a large market, we needed it. So we told the business that this software had to be redesigned and business had to agree with that. We told them from scratch. It's not like we have uh, any particular secrets here. Most of the products we buy, they are either about mail or taxi or search, and obviously there is something we understand pretty well. And we have some technologies that are very easy to implement. So when I say things need to be designed from scratch, uh, this does not mean we'll need to get a new team or a new technology. We mostly always have all the resources we need in-house. So you are not involved in making a decision about a purchase. Well, I can assure you that Yandex has never bought something it didn't need. Yandex knows exactly the market where it plays. So we never buy something that's just a fad. You're a large company. So you must have your own land rules. You'll probably give uh, full admin rights to all their people that use cloud services. How do you then educate the people and tell them that the life will be different? Be well, we are a tyrant. We give them the equipment that is running everything we need. It's running all the AVs. And they can't really change that. And the help desk will not give you anything different. This is not an area where we are prepared to compromise. Well, it can happen, for example, that our AV stands in the way of a particular system a developer is using. Well, then we'll look at it as a technical problem. And I can assure you that our office network is fully standardized. Everybody is running the same equipment, which we're taking pretty good care of. It's never happened that a startup would come into our office, connect their own equipment, and live in every tower. You mentioned this transition period. How would you run everything during the transition period? During the transition period, you usually connect by a VPN. Well, in fact, we've got lots of outsources and lots of outside consultants. Most of them work uh, via VPN. They could be using tokens or other technologies. So we have a procedure for assuring access for a third party into our system <coughs> within certain confines. So for the first, uh, for the first several whatever period, newcomers will usually have access like this. When they relocate, they get full-blown access. Do you have other questions, guys? Well, if not, then thank you very much. Uh, send me emails if you're interested. Thank you.